Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a magnificent problem for you all today. Uh, this problem is from the China Hong Kong Math Olympiad in 2018. And I found it from a poster on the Art of Problem Solving Forum. Um, and it's the second problem out of four on the exam. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a cyclic quadrilateral, A, B, C, D. And we extend DA to point P and DC to point Q so that AP is equal to BC and CQ is equal to AB. And then we let M be the midpoint of PQ and we want to show that MA is perpendicular to MC. All right. So when I first saw this problem, I noticed we have a lot of um, equality of segments. And whenever we have that, it's often a good idea to look for congruent triangles. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. Um, so if you look at triangle PAB and triangle MC, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, PAB and BCQ, uh, two of the three uh, pairs of sides in those triangles are equal, right? Because AB is equal to CQ and PA is equal to BC. But the, the angle between those two sides isn't equal. And in fact, they're 180 minus each other because ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. So what I'm gonna to try to do is, I'm gonna to try to create a con congruent triangle um, by taking point Q and reflecting it across point C. Um, so I'm gonna let E be the reflection of Q across point C. And now we have triangle BCE is congruent to triangle PAB um, because we have the same two sides as in triangle BCQ but now um, the angle BCE is 180 minus BCQ, right? So I'm gonna write this out, okay? So we have EC is equal to CQ, which is equal to AB from the problem statement. And then also BC is equal to AP from the problem statement. Um, and then the angle between them also has to be equal because ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral so the exterior of an angle has, uh, in a cyclic quadrilateral has to equal the opposite angle. And so angle BCE is equal to angle PAB, all right? And so from there, it's clear by side angle side that those two triangles have to be congruent, all right? Now there's another um, benefit um, to constructing point E that I'm gonna mention later, which is that uh, since EC is equal to CQ and PM is equal to MQ, uh, PE has to be parallel to MC. Uh, so I'm going to get to that later. Um, but first I'm going to note, uh, since triangle BEC is congruent to triangle BPA, uh, the third side that we didn't mention also has to be equal. So BP has to equal BE. And I'm going to try to take advantage of that in solving this problem. Okay, so BP is equal to BE. Um, so my next idea here was, ultimately I wanna show that MA is perpendicular to MC. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna talk about how PE is parallel to MC. Um, but because uh, BP is equal to BE, that means if I drop a perpendicular to PE, it would have to bisect PE. So I'm gonna draw this. Um, so this is actually what I just mentioned. So because PM is equal to MQ and EC is equal to CQ, that gives us another benefit of constructing point E, which is that we know PE has to be parallel to MC, okay? Um, so really we wanna show that PE is perpendicular to MA because uh, PE is parallel to MC, all right? Um, but if we drop a perpendicular from B to PE, which I'm gonna call F, it has to bisect uh, PE. And that's because uh, BP is equal to BE, as I mentioned, okay? Um, so this is what I just said. So uh, BP is equal to BE. So PF is equal to FE, okay? So, we know that BF is perpendicular to PE by definition, and we know PE is parallel to MC. 
So if I could show FB is parallel to AM, that would solve the problem. All right. So that will be my goal here. I'm going to try to show that FB is parallel to AM. And so one other thing I'm going to note before I um, do something interesting is that um, since F is the midpoint of PE uh, and M is the midpoint of PQ, then FM has to be parallel uh, to DQ. So I'm going to write this out. So, so FM is parallel to EQ, so I'm going to draw in that segment. Okay, so the figure looks a little bit symmetric. We're trying to show FB is parallel to AM. Um, so how can we utilize sort of symmetry uh, to prove this? And we also know that triangle PAB is congruent to triangle BEC. So I'm going to do something a little tricky here. I'm going to take triangle BEC and I'm going to translate it. Um, so, so FM, FMCE is a parallelogram um, because FM is parallel to EQ and uh, PE is parallel to MC. Uh, so I'm going to write that. But what we can do is I can take triangle BEC and I can translate it so that uh, side EC moves to FM. So I'm doing a diagonal translation. Uh, so E goes to point F and C goes to point M and I want to see where point B goes to. So I'm going to let B go to point G. Okay. Um, so EF, uh, CM, and BG are all kind of the same length and direction. Um, and the reason why I did that was because now there's a kind of symmetry. Um, basically, we want to show that APGM is an isosceles trapezoid. Um, and due to uh, the symmetry of the figure, uh, it won't be too hard to get there. Um, so I'm going to draw in a few more lines. Um, but we know that um, because, um, like I said, the line or the segment from E to F and C to M and B to G, they're all the same length and they're all the same direction. Uh, so BG has to equal EF and that also has to equal FP, um, like we mentioned. So, so BG is equal to FP, okay? Uh, so this is what I said. So GB is equal to FE is equal to PF. So these two are the same length. And then uh, we also know that um, BG is parallel to FE. L like I mentioned, all, all three of these segments, EF, BG, and CM, they're all the same length, but also in the same direction. So BG is parallel to EF. Um, so it has to be parallel to PF. Uh, so I'm going to write this out. So yeah, so BG, it's parallel to this, this um line EP, and also BF is perpendicular to PE. Uh, we mentioned that before. And so BF, P, uh, F, B, G has to be a rectangle. Um, so now we're essentially very close to solving the problem because the two triangles PBA and GFM are congruent, uh, right? Because um, BEC was congruent to uh, PBA, and then I just took it and I translated it. So, so since PBA is congruent to GFM, uh, there's a symmetry about the figure. Um, and, and due to that symmetry, because PGBF is a rectangle, uh, PG has to be parallel to AM. Uh, so that's not hard to see uh, using symmetry. You have a rectangle and then you have two congruent triangles, PBA and GFM. And so I'm not going to prove it all out here, but it's, it's clear um, from the figure that PG is parallel to AM. Okay, so this is what I mentioned. So PBA is congruent to GFM. And since PFBG is a rectangle, uh, it follows that AM has to be parallel to PG, 
And since PGBF is a rectangle, that has to be parallel to FB. So we're almost there. So AM is parallel to FB. Um, but we know that FB is perpendicular to PE. And we know that PE is parallel to MC. So that basically gives us enough to solve the problem. So I'm going to write this out. But we have that uh, FB, FP is perpendicular to P, um, but that would mean that MA has to be perpendicular to PE, because we just showed that MA is parallel to FB. And if MA is perpendicular to PE, well, we also had that um, PE is, is um, parallel to MC. So that means that MA has to be perpendicular to MC, and that solves the problem. So I kind of like this problem because uh, it doesn't involve any uh, real fancy high-level geometry techniques. Although if you look in the, in the link in my description, uh, there are some people on the forum that proved it using spiral similarities or kind of other ideas, um, but it's really accessible to everyone. Uh, so if you like this problem, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.